say a few things about her. She is an awesome anointed woman of God, amen. And she is called for this generation and for this time, amen. And there is also a word in her belly, amen. How many know that in this day and time, you gotta have a wonderful wife beside you to pull you through, amen. You gotta have somebody when you're going through some stuff. Come on, when you're going through something, you gotta have somebody that know how to lay hands on your head and say, in the name of Jesus, come on. And as I said, I know I want to say to the most beautiful woman in the world, can we celebrate my first lady today, amen. First lady in the world, amen. standing beside me, amen, every day praying for me and bringing me through, amen. At this time, we're going to allow for his wonderful wife to come, amen, and to introduce her man of God, amen. Let's greet her by saying praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And after that, after she comes, we want us to all, we want the choir to sing, after the choir sings, we will all stand in reverence of the man of God, amen. 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 amen.
is our God. I don't know about y'all, but I know God is great. Yes, 
have, I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. And then he broke down and wept bitterly. In verse 5, go back to Hezekiah. Isaiah is talking. Go back to Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David says. I have heard your prayer, seen your tears, and I will heal you. And in three days from now, you will get up out your bed and go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life, and I will rescue you from this city, the kingdom of Assyria, and I will defend the city from my own honor and for my sake, for my servant David. As we look at the text, prophet Isaiah, in verse 1, Hezekiah is trying, Hezekiah, prophet, prophet Isaiah, tells Hezekiah to get his house in order for he's to die and not recover. But at this point, Hezekiah, he could have chose to give up, he could have chose to accept his death sentence that was spoken over his life. It's something just like us Christians, when we have a tendency, when we get a bad report, when, when things happen, we have a tendency to take that report and just fall apart, lose hope, and give in. But we must be like Hezekiah in verse number two and turn our face to the wall. We must not accept everything that is spoken of our lives. We must turn our face to the wall, block every person, everything, and, every, and, and everything that will cause us not to focus on God. We must walk faithfully with a pure heart as Hezekiah did read in verse 3. It is amazing that when we get in a situation, we cry out to God. But when everything is all good, we forget about God the way he wants us to. We must be faithful to God at all times. So he can make us and deliver us from whatever it is. The second person I'd like to talk about today is the widow of Zephyr. In 1 Kings verse 17, chapter 17, verse 10 and 11, it says, the, war, the widow woman is gathering sticks to use to build a fire to prepare a meal for her son. So at this point, at this point, Elijah meets the woman at the gate, asks her for some water and a piece of bread. She replies in verse 12, but she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I do not have a single piece of bread in thy house. And I only have a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cook of oil in the bottom of my jug. As I was gathering a few sticks to cook, the, as I gathered a few sticks to cook the meal, that my son and my son and I would die. Here it is that everything that the widow had for her son and her, Elijah is asking for it. We must learn as Christians to trust God when he speaks. It may not always look right, it may not always feel right, and I don't always don't sound right. But it's always, but we always got to trust him. So the widow woman sacrificed and gave all to Elijah, Elijah, and when he did, there was more than enough left over. This lets us know, as long as we trust God and do according to his will, we will be blessed beyond measure. The last person I would like to talk about is a familiar person by the name of Job. Job had everything plus more, just more than what most people had in that time, and even what we do have in this day and time. But in chapter one, it says he was the greatest among people. God went through, Job went through two tests. He lost his cattle, he lost his donkeys, all that first. Then he lost his wife, he lost everything. And then on top of that, he lost his health. We must understand that every attack is not part of the, not designed by the devil, but sometimes it's designed by God to test us. Though both tests are through sickness of Job, Job still remained faithful and still trusted God in this time of suffering. In the book of James chapter 5, verse number 11, it says, we give great honor to those who endure suffering. God wants to see if you can persevere in what you're going through to pass the test. Ask your neighbor, have you passed the test? In Romans chapter 5, verse 3 and 4, it states, not only, not, not only so, but we will also rejoice in the sufferings, because we know that the suffering produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, character produces hope. Why do you want to give God all the praise so you can develop some character in the spirit? How many of y'all have pressed forth to get some character in the spirit? Hallelujah. It takes some prayer. It takes some fasting. 
Hallelujah. Take the reading some word and let's use it to develop some character. Hallelujah. So John persevered and did not curse God and remain faithful. God will reward him and gave him back double for what he lost. So my brothers and my sisters, if you can preserve, if you can persevere, because God is going to bless you double for your trouble. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we gonna make it. We gonna make it. I'm trying to tell you, y'all, this is the day and time we got to trust God with all of our hearts. And we not to end up to our own understanding. And God will direct you. I was paying my hand on June 4th, 2011. And tell us right now, no matter the situation, no matter what you're going through, God is going to deliver you if you remain faithful. If you trust Him, He'll remain faithful. If you trust Him, He'll bring it out to you. And all that mind, if you trust him, he'll bring it out to you. He's going to give you double for your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. I need everybody to lift your hand. I love you, Jesus. 